I'm Mike Murtis from GamerLogic.net, and today we are taking a look at Mighty Final Fight, the super deformed version of the arcade classic Final Fight. The Super NES version of Final Fight will always stick in my mind as one of the first games I noticed what a bad port of a game could end up being like on another system. Not having the SNES version available to rent anywhere, my only opportunity to play it was by getting a used copy of it back in the early 90s. My little brother and I found a used copy for 20 bucks at a video game store the next town over, and I begged, begged my little brother to help put our money together so we could buy it. When we got home and we both found out that it was only a one player game, he was extremely disappointed and angry at me for convincing him to pick up a game that I swore up and down was two players. In fact, he still reminds me about that from time to time, 20 years later. I was quite surprised a year or so later when I discovered Mighty Final Fight being covered in an issue of Nintendo Power Magazine. This game was also only one player, but featured super deformed versions of characters from their 16-bit counterparts. Another feature I thought looked interesting was the fact that there was an experience system in the game. As you beat up more opponents, you gained experience points that would eventually boost your level, giving you a new skill. At that point, the only other game I played in the brawler genre that did that was the original NES version of Double Dragon, which I thought was quite unique. Sadly. This game came out in 1993, and around that time the NES was basically being put out of its misery due to the ever-growing interest in the Super Nintendo, Genesis, and other more updated systems. Rental stores stopped picking up new NES games to rent to people, and some stores like Best Buy didn't carry NES games outright. With that being the case, I wouldn't have the opportunity to play this game until about 2008 when I picked up a Famicom version of the game. In its own right, Mighty Final Fight actually ends up being a bit more fun than the Super NES version. Its graphical style is simple, but colorful, and brings back memories of River City Ransom with its look. The game also handles very well, and provides the players with a variety of different special moves you can utilize across all three characters. Oh, and there's another aspect that this game features over the SNES version. All three characters are included. You won't be missing Guy in this version, and you certainly won't have to pick up an alternate version of the game to play him. The music is quite catchy in this game, and certainly reminds you that you're playing a Capcom game. Like any brawler, once you figure out the play mechanics of the enemies and what combos do the most damage, you can blaze through this 5 stage game in under an hour or less. Having two other characters to play as though, it at least gives you a couple hours of replay value. The game only presents two enemies on screen at once, which makes the game seem a little sparse at times during fights, but I think it really is the sweet spot for the platform it's on. One more enemy, and the fight areas may seem too crowded, which could lead to the player getting overwhelmed quickly. The only other gripe I have with this game is the fact that it's only one player, but it would be way, way too simple if you had someone to co-op with. As far as brawlers go on the NES, this is definitely one to check out if you've never had the opportunity to play it. Honestly, this is one of my favorite Final Fights to play along with the arcade version, Sega CD version, and the re-release on last-gen consoles that was released a few years ago. Thanks for watching.